everybody, welcome back to the decks where one time Captain Kirby paid the Beard Bros $250 to get us to do trivia and strategy for another Pokemon this week. I'm Team Yell Grunt Alex. And I'm Pokekels. Wait a minute, so you're telling me that somebody paid the Beard Bros money to bring us back from the dead? Is that legal? I mean, technically yes, but I haven't told you about what we're doing yet. Well, I, you know, that's you gotta... so messed up. Like, who? what are we going to even do an episode on? Like, Alchemy, Dragapult, the mystery of why people had full-on tantrums about a low poly tree? <laughs> Damn, dude, we've been back for 10 seconds and you already spilled the tea. Whatever, I'm a new woman now, my hair is green, and you can't bully me. Sword and Shield are the best Pokemon games in years. The Isle of Armor kicks ass, and if I'm doing an episode, it's gonna be on one of my favorites, not just some random Pokemon a patron from some other YouTube show decides. We're we're doing Don Fan. Like I said, Patreon is a good thing that people are good to do, and Cotton Kirby is a saint, and if they don't bring back the national decks, I'm gonna get my baby bottle, and I'm gonna get my rattle, and I'm gonna bother people on Twitter until they can't stand it anymore and they get tired. It's Don Fan. Love Don Fan. Don Fan is the armor Pokemon from all the way back in Gen 2. Its name is a mix of the root Don, which means leader or king, and Fant, which means huge. So, you know, he's King Huge. Or at least King of the Elephants, even though he's only like three feet tall and 265 pounds. That's like way smaller than most elephants. Okay, yes, but it is just about the size of the Cypress Dwarf Elephant, which was a smaller species that you could literally find on the island of Cyprus about 13,000 years ago, which stood just under four feet and weighed around 300 pounds. Apparently, leaving elephants on an isolated island for thousands of years makes them shrink like goldfish. Who knew? I did, but that's just because I did all the research. And trust me, Donphan is fairly small, but that does not mean he isn't mighty. According to his Pokedex entries, its skin is so tough that regular attacks don't touch it, and apparently it can use tackle to destroy an entire house. That doesn't make sense. But what does make sense is that like most creatures who have them, their long tusks grow slowly throughout their lives. Whoever has the biggest tusks in the herd has the highest rank, but I think you'll agree that it's much more fun to call that one the Don of the Don fan. Yikes. Anyway, I've had a soft spot for this guy ever since he debuted in Mewtwo Strikes Back using Rollout Against Ash's Bulbasaur. But even though the movie dropped in Japan all the way back in July 8th, 1999, it didn't appear in the games until Gold and Silver that November. I remember picking Silver especially for Don Fan. And speaking of version exclusives, did you know Don Fan and his version exclusive partner Ursaring actually switched versions outside of Japan and Korea? No one really knows why for sure, but they even did it again in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, so now he's back in gold. Shoot, it works for me. I grabbed Heart Gold when it came out to switch it up, and I gotta be friends with Don Fan twice. Nice! And besides, you need at least two Don Fan to put together. Oh the no, you're not the gonna talk about the Don Fan cycle again, okay. are you? What do you mean? Can't you just see it? A sturdy frame with two rotating axles that the Don Fan grab with their tusks, with a trainer that's me at the reins? I mean. It's part Don Fan drawn carriage. Part motorcycle, all cool. The Don Fan cycle starting at two hundred ninety nine dollars. Okay, I, I get it. You know, she's actually been talking about this for years in real life. It must have really captured your imagination, Bean. You know what? I really think that it did. Just the idea of using your body as a wheel—it's totally epic. Which is why we're calling today's brand new segment "Reinventing the Wheel." What? No, 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 we're not. No, we're not. It's uh, it was animal influences. Why don't you just ever tell me these things like before we do it? Like, why am I even? What am I even? Why do I even work? Why am I even writing? You're writing. You're writing. You're writing. Rolling up like a tire and rolling around seems like an awesome way of moving about, but it's definitely a very rare behavior in the animal kingdom. However, one of the more well-known rollers is the southern three-banded armadillo, the only species of armadillo that can fully curl up into a ball. However, while this certainly influenced Don Fan's armor-like hide, armadillos don't actually propel themselves around like that rolled up. That's more of a cartoon-only kind of thing. Yep, wheeling up and rolling out is a defense tactic that really only is employed for serious by a couple of species of animals, and the one that we have the best B-roll of for this episode is the Mount Lyle Salamander. See, salamanders of the species Hydromantes have evolved a defense mechanism in which they spring into the air and coil their bodies into a wheel shape and roll away downhill. It's the fastest way for them to escape in the steep, uneven mountain terrain where they live. Plus, it looks insane. But that's not all. In the Bug Kingdom, both the Pearl Moth Caterpillar and the Golden Wheel Spider also employ this escape tactic, curling up and rolling quickly away from predators. Though they live in vastly different habitats, the wheel shape is super efficient for both. That's right. 
In the leafy forests, that soft wheel shape can help absorb the shock of falling out of trees by flexing and turning it into momentum. And in the desert, an even weight distribution helps a spider, whose legs are basically just tiny needles, make a clean getaway without getting tripped up in the shifty sands. But in the end, Dawn Fan still has the best adaptation. Its natural armor acts like tire treads, giving it the traction it needs to go fast enough to knock down a house or whatever I said before. At least according to the Pokedex. Have you ever noticed that the Pokedex is kind of obsessed with Pokemon destroying man-made structures? No? Just me? Cool. Well, I'm sure it's not just you, but I've, I've never noticed. Are you kidding me? Like Nidoking, Rhydon, Pangoro, the list goes on. You know what? I'm sure it does. Can I get into some sweet Gen 8 Dawn Fan Sword and Shield battle strategy now, though? Sure. You're the greatest, baby. Pokemon! Okay, so it has come to our attention that Dawn Fan is currently unobtainable in Pokemon Sword and Shield. Yeah, I know. Wait, you know? What do you mean you know? I don't know, I was just worried that if we made a big deal about him being one of the Pokemon that was left out of the game, people would start talking about that again instead of how cool Dawn Fan is. It's really cool. Hmm. You know, I was planning on roasting you for this extreme lapse in production coordination, but honestly, I feel that super hard. Sometimes we get so hung up on the weird made up politics that we forget that the reason we're all yelling is just because we love Pokemon so much. Don Fan is an awesome, small, tough guy elephant, and it still exists, and I love it, and I want to ride around on two of them like a motorcycle, and the science even kind of checks out. Um, yeah, you know, like, maybe the real battle strategy is just to focus on the love, right? You know, like, everybody stop fighting about a video game and fight Team Rocket. Is that good? Is that, is that deep? Do I... Did I solve it? Did I end it? Peace. Yikes. But of course, that's not the only way to train a Dawn fan, so as always, here are a few random thoughts. I think we should give Pokemon props for all the strides they made this gen towards making VGC accessible to the general public and for having one of the most innovative and exciting competitive formats in years. I am super excited for the new Pokemon Snap. I've been waiting for a game like this for like 20 years, and when I saw it, I wept. I woke up at six in the morning, saw that, and wept. Real tears. It's not that hard for me though, I, we I weep it a lot. And while I got you here, how cool would it be if Let's Go Games let you use a pro controller in docked mode? Why is that a handheld only feature? The Pokeball is cute, but I'm seriously supposed to grind through hours of master trainers with it? No way. No way. No way. No way. And finally, I bought that big ass fur at plush, and it rules, and I love it, and Alex also has feelings about it. Never regretted it for a second. And that's it, Don Fan, with an extra side helping of nostalgia for an eight-year-old YouTube show. Thanks, Captain Kirby. And speaking of nostalgia, thanks to all of you who loved the decks and anyone who still supports us and thinks of us today. From Kells, Alex, and, jo oh, wait a minute. What? What about Jimmy? Oh, well, it's a Beard Bros thing. I figured I'd just have Ted help us shoot. You didn't want to at least call him for a quick cameo or something? Oh, psh, nah, don't worry about Jimmy. He's probably got a million things on his plate. I don't want to bother him. Yeah, you're probably right. He's probably super busy. Oh, well. Thanks for watching. I'm Poka Kells. And I'm Team Yale Grunt Alex. Never say never, but there probably won't ever be another Wooly episode of The, the Dex. Dex. I'm Poka Kells. And I'm Shady Guy Alex, yo. You don't know me. You're yeah, their, uh, stupid. They're gonna call me. Uh-huh. Well, yeah, but whatever. This week we're doing the Hoodlum Pokemon. It's Scrappy. <laughs> Scrappy is a hilarious creature from Gen 5 who can best be described as a kind of yellow-orange hood rat lizard thingy. Okay, well I don't know if that's the best way to describe him, but I can't really say it's wrong either. True, him and Scrappy are the only dark fighting types in the game, but come on, he sheds his skin and wears it like a hoodie. And he's a total tough guy too. He's got a super high special defense. Hey Wallace, you did it! You're so good in the episode. You did everything right. Sands. That's a cut. And trust me, John John fan. John John fan. An even weight distribution help helps. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've had a soft spot for this little guy ever since he debuted debuted. We didn't get a clip of you saying yeah, I know. It's a wide. Oh, okay, good. Okay. I knew that was good. <laughs>